So we've done the experiment where we drained the water from the bottle, we measured the change in height, that was our independent variable, and we timed how long it took for the column of water to drain down to just above the hole at the bottom of the bottle. We've collected this data and I've taken this data from Cavius. Um, we've got a series of times, we've got three times for each in value of independent variable. And we've got a range of independent variables. We need at least five different values for the independent variable. And we should go from as high as possible to as low as possible as well. And that's going to help us to see a really clear relationship. So once we've got this data, we're going to look at these times. And if any of them stand out as being significantly different, then we would identify those as outliers and we would circle the outlier and put a line through it and then we wouldn't include that in our average. Looking at all of these times they all seem quite consistent possibly the lowest or the, the one that stands out most from the others in my mind would be this 9.27 and so while I don't really think that there's anything wrong with that I'm going to demonstrate the outlier just so you've all seen what we would do with it. So I'm going to say that because 9.66 and 9.78 are much closer together than this 9.27, I'm going to circle the 9.27 and put a line through it, call it an outlier. I'm then going to take my calculator and I'm going to work out the average. So I'm going to add each of the values together and divide by how many samples there were for each change in height. On the table, we've got our units stated clearly in brackets, and I've put a little title here just to explain what it is we're investigating. So down here, we've got 9.66, and I'm adding that to 9.78, and then I'm going to divide that, because there's only two numbers that I'm using there, I'm going to divide that by two, and that gives me an average of 9.72 seconds. If that number that I got for my average did not sit between my highest and lowest values, then I've made a mistake. And the common mistake is to add all three things together and then divide by three and hit equals. And if you do that, what you're actually doing, because division comes before addition, is you are dividing the last number by three, so in this case, 46 divided by 3 would be about just over 15. Okay, We would be doing just over 15 added to 46.5 and 46. And so our average would come out at around about 105. Okay, In actual fact, we know that the average has to lie somewhere between 46 and 46.5. So just to save us time, I think I've prepared... Uh, those averages already and so we've got 46.27 here 42.21 um, 38.05 34.58 and 26.44 and just checking to make sure that those all seem reasonable Okay. Um, at this stage, we're ready to plot our first graph and to see what um, sort of relationship we're dealing with. Um, the graph can come out in a few different shapes. And I'm just going to put these under the camera right now so that you can see the different shapes for the relationships that might exist. If the graph curves upwards like this, then it means that we would square the independent variable in order to produce a straight line relationship. If it curves like this, then we square root our independent variable, which is on the x-axis, and that's going to give us a nice straight line relationship. These two are a little bit different. If it sweeps down in this way, then it's an inverse relationship. And what that means is to make a straight line, you have to do 1 divided by your values of an independent variable to make it a nice straight line. And in some cases, that still won't make a straight line, and so we end up with what's called an inverse square relationship. 
We're probably not going to be dealing with this one, but I'll tell you about it just so you know. This one has a slightly steeper drop and then rounds out to plateau, and that is 1 divided by your independent variable squared. Okay? So 1 divided by whatever your x value is squared. So you've got these here, and they'll now be on the video for you to refer to as you're going through. But you probably need to be most familiar with this one, this one, and this one. All right, so let's see what our data comes out as. Um, I've prepared my axes here, and I'm going to move my data just over to one side um, while I talk through the graph. When we're planning our scales, we want to use as much graph paper as possible. So we want to use the full space that's available uh, without squashing anything in and without um, jumping up in uneven increments. So we want to start from zero in the origin. Um, our dependent variable, so the thing that we measured perhaps multiple times, um, in this case is time. So that was dependent on us changing something else deliberately. And so the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So in this case, I'm going to put our average time, that's measured in seconds, on the y-axis. Our independent variable goes on the x-axis. And so down here, I'm going to write in change in height. And that's measured in, or oh, we measured it in centimeters. Normally, I do everything in um, SI units, which means meters for anything related to distance, seconds for anything with time, um, kilograms for anything to do with mass, newtons for anything to do with force. Okay? So normally, I would use meters, but because we agreed we were going to use centimeters, because our scale on the bottles was marked in centimeters, I've changed that for this demonstration. All right, um, the highest value that we need for the independent variable is 19. The lowest value we need is 2, but our scale is going to be determined by what our highest value is. We're probably going to go, not go to an even, an even number like 19, so we normally go a little bit beyond, and so I think 20 would probably be a reasonable number to go up to on our independent um, variable axis, so on our x-axis. So looking at this, we've got um, how many big boxes have we got? We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Okay, and if you're using this graph paper again, you'll know that there's always 22 going along the way. So it probably makes sense to go um, 5, 10, 15, and then out to 20. Now I've made a little mistake there. So this is something for you guys to be wary of. I jumped up in five boxes here to the five, and then I jumped up four boxes and wrote in the 10. Now that is gonna cause problems. Okay? And I've done that so that you can see what one common mistake is. So I'm gonna just fix that. Now normally I would do my graph in pencil, but because we're recording this, I thought pen would be more visible. So I'm gonna fix that, I'm gonna put my 10 there. And that means my 15 is now incorrect as well. So I'm going to fix that up, counting out five big boxes, and my 15 should be here. And then two, four, five takes me out to 20 along there. So that's using most of the axis. I'm happy with that. For average time, the highest value that we'll need is 46.27 if we're using the average times. Okay, so we probably want to go up to 50 would be a reasonable idea. Um, up this way, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 boxes all the way to the top. And so we need to decide what's going to be a reasonable number to jump up in. If we jump up in 1, we're going to get to 16, which is far too low. If we jump up in 2s, we're going to get to 32. Still not enough. We could jump up in threes, which would take us to 48, which is just enough. But jumping up in threes is really awkward for you because then you've got these five little boxes 
and every little box isn't an easy increment for you to understand because you then have a jump of three which you're dividing by five to get these small boxes okay and so it would mean that the point three uh, sorry the jump of three divided by five would be what would that come out as 0.6 and that means that each little box is 0.6 which isn't really an intuitive scale for you to work in so, uh, what if we used fours? Well, we could go up in fours, and that would get us um, certainly with more space than what we needed. Um, I'm going to suggest that for this one, we're going to be a slight, slightly unconventional. We're going to use fives, which means that every little box represents a one, and every big box represents five. Now, that's not going to get us much above halfway on the page, but I think that should work for this situation. So I'm going to go ahead and go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So I've planned my scales, I've laid it out, there's no uneven jumps and I'm happy that I'm going to be able to use those scales. I've labelled the axes and included my units in both cases and so we're ready to plot the points. For the first graph, we're just plotting the average time. And so our values are 2 and 9.72. So my 2 is here, and that's going to take us up to about 9.72, plotting my point with a cross and the center of the cross clearly locating where the data point should lie. Now then we go up to 8 and 26.44 so a big jump there and you can see how important it was that we had as low a value as possible so 8 and 26.44 so I can see 25 is here 26 is here and 0.44 is going to be about halfway up the next little box so around about there I think 8 26.4 then we've got uh, 12 and 34.58 so I'm going to go up to 35 and then I'm just going to come back down by about half a little box not even half a little box and put my cross there the next one is 14 and it's 38.05 so near as damn it 38 which I believe is there and then 42.41 is the time it took for a 16 centimeter column of water to drain. So we're up to 16 here, and we're going up to 40, 1, 42, and just a little bit above that for the 0.21. Then the last one is 19, so all the way along here, and that's 46.27. So we've got up to 45 there, 46 is just beyond that and about quarter of a little box for the 0.27 okay now at this point because my dependent variable axis my y-axis is relatively squashed it's harder slightly harder to see the curve than it would be if i had managed to use all of the scale but i think we can see here that there is a reasonable curve pattern interestingly if we took away this point that lowest value then this could be easily mistaken for a straight line. And so that highlights the importance of getting the smallest values and the highest values as possible. So to show the relationship here, I'm going to take uh, ideally a pencil, but in this case a pen, just so it's a bit more clear for the video, and I'm going to do a sweep through those points. I am not starting at zero. I'm going to start from this first point here, and my curve is going to look something like that. Which relationship does that match from the graphs, the shapes of graph that we've seen? And we can probably see that it is a square root relationship. And what that means is that we're going to square root all of the values for our change in height and record those in our data table. And then when we plot the square root of change in height versus time, we're going to see a nice linear relationship that's going to let us work out the mathematical formula linking the change in height to the time taken for that column of water to drain.
Um, just for good practice, I'm going to write down the type of relationship here. This is something that we did in level two as well. So here we've got time is proportional to change in height. And I'm just going to use delta, my triangle symbol, to relate to change in height there. So that's just stating the type of relationship that we've identified. And I could write that out in words if I was more comfortable with that. Okay. Um, any questions? How's it? The ones that like thirty eight point zero five. Yep. I just did that on thirty eight. Is that fine, or will that affect my my line? Yeah, I think in the video I'd said um, so. In the work that we'd just done, when I did the thirty eight, I think I said thirty eight point zero five is near as damn it on thirty eight, and so I just put it directly on the um, junction for that one. I didn't really worry about the point zero five. So that's okay. What I would normally suggest is that as long as your point is within um, the correct, like the, you know, within the correct little box, then I'd probably be happy with that. Okay. So, okay. like the first one is nine point seven two. Mm -hmm. If I did that on ten, would that be okay? okay. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be as as happy with it on ten because I could clearly see the distinction between it being on ten and then being. Um, slightly below 10 but you would be within the correct box and so um, I probably wouldn't bust a gut over it in that case All right. but try and be if you know that it's a little bit below 10 then show that on the graph right. good question any others